My name is Elijah Navarro, percussion product specialist at the Dario and Company, percussion brands Evans Drumheads, Promark Drumsticks, and Pure Sound Snare Wire. I'm joined today by my good buddy Kenny Sharitz, professional drum tech for big acts like Stevie Wonder, Train, and Rihanna. Kenny, how are you, brother? Man, I am doing awesome today. How are you? I'm doing great, man. Good to see you. So, what are we talking about today? What are we doing? Well, today we're going to remove and replace a set of Pure Sound snare wires, as well as remove, clean, install, and then tune a bottom head on this lovely Ludwig snare drum. So, I'm looking forward to that. All right. All right. So, let's get started. Now, the first thing you want to look at is when to replace these snare wires. Now, yeah. you notice this has been on tour a little bit. As it gets packed, it gets caught on little things. You get little bends in these snare wires. This really affects your tone mm. of the drum, as well as the snap of the snare wire. And this is an indication that it is time to replace it. Same thing if sometimes some of these will snap off on the ends. Right. You don't want that because because what will happen is not only does it reduce tone, but then you get an imbalance in the way the snare seat, and also you get extra snare buzz and rattle that you don't want. Oh, so today man. we're gonna take this bad boy out. What I'm gonna do is take these customs off, and we're putting on some custom pros today, aren't we? We are. All right. <laughs> oh, I love those custom pros, because not only do they sound amazing, but that new plate you got, which removes snare buzz and helps like, control the snare sensitivity, oh, it's nothing like it. So when you're doing this, you want to go ahead and be gentle with it as you can because you don't want to hurt the butt plate or the snare string. And so you want to be delicate with it, and that way, nothing gets hurt. Got it. Thank you, Shaw. Yeah. Slide that right out. All right, now that we got the snares off, we're going to go ahead and remove this bottom head. We're going to use the Evans drill bit key. Now, when you use this key, you want to be careful to guide it with your fingers so you're not stripping anything out. And let's get to this NASCAR style. Would you mind, my friend? I wouldn't. Now as we remove the head, of course, we want to take a moment and get a cloth and wipe that off. Make sure we're nice and clean again. You don't want any dust or dirt getting into these light casings. Let's go ahead and grab this lovely 300. Oh, this goes so well with the HD head that is on the top of this. All right, now one of the things I want to point out, the most important thing when you're changing a bottom snare head is a two-step process. One, you want to look at this bearing edge. Now this is the bearing edge where the head and the drum meet. On any other side of a snare drum, top snare drum, or a tom-tom or a bass drum, it's perfectly round all the way around and perfectly even. However, on a snare drum, it's dipped just a little bit by the butt plate mm. and the snare strainer. So not only do you want to be aware of that when you start tuning because there might be a little wrinkle, don't worry about that wrinkle, we'll get to it, but you also want to make sure mm. you put your snare slot yeah. with a snare bag, because God knows I've done that. I'm pretty sure you have too, oh, where you're like, too bring the heads on! Yeah. And then you realize it's not in the right place. So make sure she aligns up. And let's go ahead and get to finger tightening these in. So. I like it. Yeah, so do I. Now again, finger tight is super important with this guy because you want to make sure, again, she is balanced. And that's the beautiful thing about the level 360 heads. They sit so nicely. They sit so wonderfully that this is really not a problem. You go with your fundamental two across from each other, which locks the head in a balanced way. Right. And then you want to do the finger tightening in your radial pattern. Again, I do it fingers together. When you're finger tightening, birds of a feather do flock together. Then we take this down to its last spot. Now you see here we have a little extra wrinkle here. Yeah. And just a little here. Again, that is from the bearing edge being a little dipped. Don't worry right. about it. We'll get to it and we'll make it happen. Now, I like to tune before I install snare wires, so that because I like to make sure that it's nice and simply done. So, and in tune before we put on the wire. So right. again, we start with our one point, give it a nice half turn, give it a nice half turn. Now, you will notice here, there's a little bit of extra wrinkle that's not on this side. That's usually an indication that it's sitting differently on that sloped bearing edge. And so you want to give it maybe a little turn up to make sure that we're balanced and most of the wrinkles gone. Now let's okay. give this a tap check. Again, when you do tap checks, you want to mute that bottom head, tap this top head. Found one that's a little low. Now beyond this point, when we start to get higher tensions, the finger works, but on the thin heads, yeah. it's a little difficult. That's why I like to use a timpani mallet. Now we got the mm. PTS-3 here going on. It's nice and soft, yet still has a firm thing, because firm tap to it, because you don't want to make too many dents in this head. It's sure. so easy to do so. Yeah. Little turn there. So 
so we have a nice, tight tensioning on the snare. Now we're ready to install some snare wires. Great job, man. Thanks so much. Hey, thank you very much, Appreciate brother. It. It's a pleasure to be here. <laughs>